Shalom and welcome to Counting the Cost, a linguistic analysis of Hebrew numbers. Today we will talk about the number five, which has a root meaning of strengthening incrementally in order to be prepared. The word for five in Hebrew for the cardinal number is Chamesh, Genesis 5.32. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Genesis 14.9. With Kedala Omer, the king of Elam, with Tidal, the king of nations, with Amraphel, the king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elasar, four kings with five. The cardinal number for fifth is Chamishi, Genesis 1, 23, and the evening and morning were the fifth day. In Leviticus 5, 16, it reads, And he shall make amends for the harm that he hath done in the holy thing, and shall add the fifth part thereto, and give it unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. So certain types of crimes require not only repaying of something that was destroyed, but you have to add a fifth part, another 20% to the part that uh, you have already ruined or stolen. Another related word from this root is Chomesh, Strong's 2570. In 2 Samuel 4, 6, we read, And they came thither into the midst of the house, as though they would have fetched wheat, and they smote him under the fifth rib, and Rechab and Ba'ana, his brother, escaped. We see that the word rib is in parentheses, meaning it's not actually in the text. The word fifth is not the same as the fifth chamishi, the normal ordinal number that we would use for fifth. Um, the fifth rib is the location of the thoracic diaphragm which splits your upper internal organs, that is, your heart and your lungs, from your lower internal organs, your liver, your stomach, your spleen, and so on. It is definitely a place where someone being hit or speared in that place would die, either from a puncture to the heart. In another place, it says that the person's internal organs spilled out. We see the use only in... Second Samuel. Another related word is Strong's 2571, Hamash, and this is a past participle relating to the idea of five. Exodus 13:18, but God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. The uh, New King James translates this as being in orderly ranks, and the NASB translates it as martial array. So the idea is that the people are organized in order to be strengthened, that they can go out even for battle. Again, we see in Joshua 1.14, Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you, on this side of the Jordan, but ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. Again, the idea of being organized and prepared for battle. If we think about the layout of the camp in the wilderness, there's a forward guard, there's a rear guard, there are two lateral guards on either side, and then the center, where the Levites were, with the Ark of the Covenant, we see these five parts and organization to prepare for battle. We're going to look at some cognate roots of Chamesh. We will look at the root Hamas, which substitutes the Samech for the Shin at the end, and also Chametz, which substitutes the Tzadi. All these three sounds, Sh, S, and Tz, are what are called sibilants. Hamas is a word that means violence, cruelty, or injustice. And yes, this is the name 
of a certain uh, classified terrorist group in the Middle East, Hamas. Genesis 6, 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Genesis 16, 5. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Yahweh judge between me and thee. A little bit of 2020 hindsight. Sarah realized that she has done violence to the plan of Yahweh. Genesis 49.5 Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Uh, this is a prophecy for the end times for these two tribes, but it refers back to the incident with their sister Dinah. Exodus 23.1 Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Chametz means leaven, and if you practice Passover, you might be familiar with this term when we remove all the unleavened things from our house. So that is uh, chametz. We talk about um, the bidikat chametz, which is the search for leaven, which takes place the night before Passover. And then, of course, we keep our house free of leaven for those seven following days. Exodus 12:15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Clearly we can understand the process of leavening is something that happens. It strengthens over time. It takes It's incremental. If you bake bread, you knead it, and then you leave it to rise so the leaven can do its work. Isaiah 63, 1, this is an interesting translation who is that that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Batsra this that is glorious in his apparel traveling in the greatness of his strength I that speak in righteousness mighty to save the idea of dyeing a garment is, is kind of incremental you have to leave it in the vat over the course of time to fully take on the, the color uh, here we imagine that this is Yeshua coming back for his bride after fighting the battle of Armageddon. In Ruth 2.14 we see a translation. Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou thither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and she reached her port parched corn, and she did eat and was sufficed and left uh, Ruth the gentle bride taking a covenant meal with Boaz the kinsman redeemer what is the importance of five this incremental strengthening to the believer Hebrews 12 27 says and this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. We are certainly looking at a time now in history when everything that can be shaken will be shaken and some things are going to be shaken off. This is uh, the idea of Hamas is the idea of a shaking and this is a time of history that I think we're looking at. 2 Timothy 2.21 says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. And so we need to be strengthening ourselves incrementally to be prepared for uh, an upcoming spiritual battle. Again, with the idea of violence, Matthew 11:12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. This is a somewhat difficult passage to analyze. It's a little cryptic. One thing that we want to understand is that the idea of violence here, if you check the Greek word, has to do with applying 
force. In the book, Understanding the Difficult Words of Jesus by David Biven and Roy um, Blizzard Jr., they bring up this passage from Micah, and they say that this passage, they have found a drosh on this passage, which they feel is relevant to the Matthew passage we just looked at. Micah 2.12, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Batra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. The breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them and Yahweh on the head of them. So Bivin and Blizzard talk about the idea of the shepherd being out in the field at night. He needs to pen up his sheep somehow. So he's going to find a piece of a natural enclosure. And then he might build around that to finish out the enclosure, maybe with just some stones, maybe with some pieces of wood. He's going to leave a small opening where the shepherd himself lies down because he is the door for the sheep. And in the morning, when the sheep have been penned up all night and they're ready to get out, we see this process of the breaking forth by the application of force. Maybe one sheep will come out and then two, and then they begin to herd together and flow out like an avalanche, breaking forth out of this sheepfold. And this is very apropos of the kingdom. When Yeshua said that the kingdom has begun with John the Baptist, in other words, uh, Yeshua himself has come and he's bringing people into the kingdom, we understand by his teachings, maybe one or two or five, but then the kingdom is increasing and more and more people are pressing to get into the kingdom. There's also a violence that's done uh, perhaps on our own understanding. First, we have a small understanding that we're sinners and we need a savior and Yeshua is that person. And then as we begin to read the Bible, to study, we get more and more understanding. And that understanding of the words that are in the Bible does a violence to what we have previously believed. And that almost also comes with an avalanche, bit by bit, and then more and more and more. Looking at the parable of the ten virgins, we see in Matthew 25, 1 and 2, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And you know the parable, and what we see is that the five that are prepared are the five wise virgins. Okay, They have strengthened themselves incrementally, and they are prepared for what's coming. Revelation 3.2, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If, therefore, thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know that hour I will come upon thee. Strengthen the things that remain. We need to be incrementally strengthening ourselves so that we are prepared for the time that is coming. I will leave you with this strengthening word from Ephesians 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And then we see this incremental strengthening of ourselves as we prepare ourselves to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loin skirt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, 
wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So one by one we learn about what it means to use these different elements of the armor, and we put them on one by one, incrementally strengthening ourselves in order to be prepared for that battle. Five things of defense, and one thing of offense, that is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I'm sure as you continue to meditate on these things, you will realize many other truths from the Word. In the meantime, Tassimita Inayim Al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom. <laughs>